Welcome to a brand new episode of the Real Life Podcast, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts and delivered by DoorDash. Welcome to Real Life, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on right now? I think that I'm in love with Matthew Kachuk. Are you guys all drunk? Welcome in episode 377, a uh, road edition, a raspy voiced edition of the real life podcast. Excuse me as I'm just walking across the hotel room to go back to bed to do this podcast as we all are. We are all doing this from the comforts of our hotel room beds. We've got a good room that sets up nice to be able to do this. Yeah. Like three the beds, people, all face three beds, other. three microphones and one roadcaster. That's called good living. If you ask me. I feel like shit. <laughs> Go on. Wait, I, have one, that. I have one cure. How did we get there? This will write the ship though, probably. I absolutely. Or it's, or it's going to send us spiraling down it, another. It's a morning twist off. We are spiraling at some point. It may or may not be the fault of this one beverage. No, it's not. This is not the, the straw that broke the camel's back. It's the leader of Bud light hard soda so cherry so cola good, edition those were delicious so good but having two of them was a bad idea yes the f- liter of cola <laughs> it's legitimately a liter of cola but my favorite part is when we walked up to order them you were like we'll get six well I, <laughs> and they're so, huge they're yeah. a liter so i didn't in my head like my eyes weren't telling my brain how big they were I just thought they were kind of like. I actually had to be Daddy J who came over and was like, no, yeah. three. I for had to now. be the parent. You're you making did. me feel old, gentlemen. Well, I'm glad you did because that would have been so <laughs> well, dumb. They're so big. So, that's, first of all, this was happening at the Oilers versus Kings game three playoff game. Let's try to paint the picture of what the hell's going on here for the listeners. Well, yeah. Okay. So let's go. Let's like, <laughs> let's rewind. We got on a plane. We kind of, we kind of we fell down a well. We, we were, ta- we were having a chat as if we were sitting at a table eating breakfast. Yeah. We forgot we, we were did. podcasting. We went to Denny's today. Anyways. Okay. Oh no, bag milk. Please don't. Not on the podcast. You're not, you're not a mango white claw fan. <laughs> That's not right now. You should not be laying with your head yeah, you gotta, dangling you off the bed. Like, sit up it can't come up if you're sitting up all right all right we got on a plane thursday at 3 40 p.m mountain time and flew to los angeles burbank burbank Bur- sorry flew to burbank the world's that was the, cool the world's shortest runway they told uh, flair told us that it was going to be a short runway and expect an abrupt landing and wow they came through i think i think mm-hmm. from touchdown to full stop was like 200 feet probably like the <laughs> length it of was, like, it was awesome and then you got out right on the tarmac. Yeah. Yeah. And absolutely. your baggage was also outdoors. I actually highly recommend flying that way because LAX is just. And we were still the, the bus ride to our hotel was still only like 25 minutes. Yeah. It's, 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 it's same, same, man, but it's less hectic. Like yeah. walking off the plane and out of the airport was like a dream. Crazy. Easy. Yeah. Very easy. Um, but then also, so we're walking off the plane. We're going to get, well, Tyler had to grab his bag. So because I have an entire podcast studio with me at all moments Jay is behind me. And then I look back and he's gone. I'm like, OK, well, we'll just wait at the baggage claim. Then he rolls up with a fresh mark somehow. Well, there's the, so on this trip with us, there's there's a crew celebrating a stag good friends of Gregor uh, and I'm that's walking. where I've seen him before. I, yes, think I met him at yes, a pizza yes. pig out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm walking past, I'm walking past the bar with BM and uh, Jay Margarita. Well, I'm not saying no, no, Just you're in Burbank. In Burbank. <laughs> Look delicious. Oh, it was, it was, it was actually, and it, cause it, it like, like it was not just like a Costco mark. It was a legit, well thought out, prepared margarita. It was Burbank a mark. delicious first cocktail of the trip. So we landed. Um, we made our way to the hotel. I think we're getting really granular here, but yes. Yeah, like first night was pretty casual. Yeah, yeah casual. first night was super casual. Went out uh, for a drink. Up, yeah, met up with Mike McKenna. We did. What a beauty. Had a nice dinner. Had ate, some food. Ate what could only be described as... Pterodactyl wings. Pterodactyl wings. They were ginormous. So I don't big. think chickens can be get that big, but these things were honking. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Thursday, very mellow. We well, all I, went to bed with our heads midnight. screwed on right. We were, we're in bed asleep before midnight. Got a good seven, eight hours sleep. And then game day. Yep. Game day. <laughs> then what happened? Game day. Well, content crushing morning. Yep. Articles. 
pregame show. LA Oilers Diaries Nation Radio Game 3 is out on the website right now. Um, yeah, we crushed the content. We got yelled at at LA Live, or did we didn't get yelled we at? She was, nice. she was very nice. She was nice. No, she was, nice. She was super but nice. She told us to move. She told us to move politely and then gave us a recommendation of where we can record. Yep. Which was basically on the street. Yep. <laughs> so if you go listen to the pregame show or watch Live the pregame show. The, the pregame show. Yeah. On the YouTube, you can hear cars driving by the whole time. Please go subscribe to our YouTube. Yeah. Um, so we did that. And then the, we, uh, we started, or we started drinking during Oilers Nation radio, to be honest. Um, and then we just started getting after it. We Get crashed, in the mix. We hung out with the Oilers now crew. Yeah. Yeah. Hung up with Jack Stoffer, Tony Brar, the new West Travel everyone. crew. Yeah. yeah, it was cool. Um, and then from there, we went to Tom's Watch Bar. We wanted to infiltrate it. There were a lot of Kings fans. It was, and, the, well, and it was I, busy. I told you. Well, the issue with well, anyways, I, 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 I we have to get there early because Kings fans get there like we have to get there before they do. Yeah, and they had they had that them. thing infiltrated early. But what I did like is there was probably two hundred people in that bar, and there was probably like thirty Oilers fans in it. The and dueling it, chants in there, and fun. we had some yeah. good "Let's Go Oilers, Go Kings, Go" chants, West Side Story style. It was fun. Corey O from Sherwood Ford drank 40 ounces of beer quicker than I've ever seen any human do anything in my life. It was committed. <laughs> those, I, boy, those boys crushed out. A, they went to Venice and crushed out a workout, which is insane stuff to do on a vacation. I though. know. I'm, 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 I'm jealous. I'm envious. Yeah. Those guys are so much fun. Oh, they're sure here. Love the I guys. love them. They were, they were two rows in front of us. So we go into the yeah. building. So we like, so, but then, so what, what was whack is, so we're like, well, let's get out in the mix. Like they've got the whole like LA lie activated. We go outside LA live. They got the Bud Light beer gardens, which ha I think has one person attending, like and the longest the serving the time. drinks, the longest lineup ever. We would still be in that line if we jumped. So in. like there was really nothing to do. So we went inside the bar in like 90 minutes, like Kennedy style, 90 minutes before puck drop. But that actually was the greatest move. Cause we just kept doing hot laps around the building and then running into Oilers fans and just having great conversations with people. And then just like hearing awesome stories and hearing how they're connected, hearing that they follow the nation, like all that stuff was super awesome. It so, just seemed like with each lap we did around crypto.com arena, our crew seemed to get bigger. It was, and bigger. It was a snowball effect. It, it was, was awesome. And so we have to do that next game because clearly banging it outside sucked. Plus it was 400 degrees outside. So it was good to kind of get inside the cool building. Then we go to the concession. Then Tyler sees his hard soda. Then bag milk tries to order six. Then I become <laughs> a dad and stop and say, guys, that's six liters of hard cola sold. <laughs> Soda. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> then we stop, make it three. And they're milk. legitimately a liter of cola. <laughs> like these things are cola. ginormous. <laughs> and, and Tyler proceeded to drink like four of them. Uh, you kept no. going back to the you, well. You kept going back to the well. I was moving to the to the skinny vodka sodas after. I had just two. To, I only had two, and then I switched to a more natural seltzer. Oh, uh, but anyways, that was good. <laughs> so then we go to our seats. Should we talk with the people we met first? Yes. Okay. Let's well, the first about. people, the people we met pregame, there was a bunch. But we met a lovely couple from Phoenix. We sure did from Edmonton originally. And from they were Edmonton. hoping to find Oilers Nation crew while they were down there. Yeah, they talked about how they've always wanted to go on Nation vacations, but since they live in Phoenix, like logistically, it doesn't work great. Yeah, so they came here and wanted to meet up with us, and they were really cool. And they shared some insights about the potential oh, yes. arena deal in Arizona. This is just uh, mad. Oh my god! So this they're is comical. Apparently, the Coyotes, who if you don't know, they're going to play their their new arena is five thousand seats, and it's on suitcase. It's on the campus of Arizona State University. Apparently, it won't be ready until like December. So the Coyotes are going to open next season on like a 25 game road trip. Yes. And and they're not allowed to play on weekends. So when the arena is open, they're not allowed to play home games on weekends because it's reserved for the school. That's insane. This and, is a professional and sorry, hockey league. I'm sorry. There's one other. Do you remember the other thing? No. I think it's like a 4,700 oh, yeah. seat arena. I think 3,000 of the seats are benches. It's bench yeah, it's seating. bleachers. Yeah. 
<laughs> I want to go though. Oh, we have to go. That is the that is the best. Like to go watch the Oilers in a but and it'll it'll be five thousand Oilers fans. Oh, and, yeah. Right, but but that's a packed barn. Like that's like that's like watching the Oilers in a WHL arena. Like going to watch them in Moose Jaw. Yeah, would be wicked. <laughs> but Moose Jaw's so not fun. all bleachers. <laughs> I commend you for being able to stomach a real beer. Like I, I'm soft. I'm just, I got my watermelon seltzer. I'm going to take this call while we're on the podcast. Hello. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Yes. It's Jay. You bet. Jay's What's, legitimately taking. How you doing? Chris from global. Oh, nice. Oh, well, he's going on the news. Yeah. As we're recording a podcast. You bet. <laughs> we are down here. This is, this is the strangest thing I've ever seen. Like, you yeah, know, yeah, we were there. Yeah, you bet. It's like content Man, it was insane. This is this is peak Jay, though. It is. If he had a salad right now, it would be the trifecta. I would go for a salad right now. I don't know. So Jay sure told us about Can this. Can we do that in like 30 minutes? I'm literally recording a podcast right now, and this is part of the podcast, <laughs> our conversation. Yeah, it's great. Well, not that guy's voice, just your yeah, voice. No, just one side of yep. the conversation. Yeah, just one side of this phone call is being. Yeah, you bet. Can you so, uh, just text me the details? I would have muted Jay's mic during this, and it would have been fine. But Perfect. the roadcaster is not in Cross. my bed. Awesome, man. And Cheers. Talk no, soon. Okay. Bye. There's no way I'm getting out of bed. We're go. going on global, boys. All of us. Well, wh- whoever wants to be in. Mm. Global wants to talk to to Oilers fans in LA. And you I said in 30 remember. minutes. I uh, said 30 minutes. Okay. It's so on Zoom. 30 minutes. So clothing optional. We should go do it from the pool. We should. Tarps yeah. off. Tarps off. Tarps Harambe. off global. Anyway, sorry. Tarps I thought it would be funny to answer that during the podcast. Yeah. I mean, I should have put it on speakerphone, but. It was funny. It was funny. Yeah. Okay. Um, so where were we? We got our hard colas. <laughs> we met the couple from Arizona. The Coyotes organization's a joke. And then we made our way to our seat or we went down and watched Great warm up. Seat. Oh yeah. We went down and watched warm up. That was, I, I, you know what, man, I, it's, it's playoffs, especially on the road. Like I turn into like a six year old child and I just go down there and I just get mesmerized and it just feels so special, but it was also cool because it was just a, like, that's the like all the Oilers fans like get around in that little, yeah. little circle there or uh, uh, in that area. And uh, that was just so cool to watch. There was a young boy in front of us wearing a Duncan Keith jersey and Duncan Keith came over and threw him a puck and fist bumped him through the glass. Yep. And if you go to the Oilers Twitter, there's a picture of it and you can very clearly see Jay enjoying the moment. Yeah, well, that, that was me that whole time watching warm up, but that was cool. I'd hop right in front of it. BM took a photo yep. as well uh, right after. So that was cool. And we kept seeing, we kept seeing that kid all over the rink, which was yeah, great. Um, okay, so we watched Warm Ups. We went and got a picture with Mike McKenna, which was cool. Yeah, that was cool. He was between the benches for TNT. Yeah, he was between the benches for TNT. I'm sure he did an awesome job. And then game starts. We had great seats. Unreal seats. Unreal seats. They were right so in the good. corner. Yeah, we were row 12. Yeah, right in the corner on the attack zone. So basically, it looked like Leon and Connor were coming in on a two on one against us in net. Like, you know what I mean? And the result was the same as if they actually did come in on a two on one. Oh I, yeah, I, I, well they would score on me a hundred times out of a hundred. Yeah. Um, oh god, my train of thought is yeah. Just, you're you're on fire right now. Normally you you you're you're, you're on this. <laughs> yeah, you're, usually I'm rolling, running on half cylinders right now. Yeah. Oilers start scoring early. Oh, yep. Set the tone, really. Set the tone. That was great. Yes. We were talking about who was sitting directly in front of us. The daughter of a certain LA Kings executive. You really GM. want us to know. She kept flipping her pass, which <laughs> is why we knew who she was. Yes. She kept flipping her pass, like kind of like over her shoulder. Trying to like, show that she had authority door. over us or something. Yeah. Like, and we were relentless. Yeah. Oh my God. We, are there some things we regret? No, no, not at absolutely all. Absolutely not. Cause we did everything. Yeah. We played by the rules. We did. And all we were doing was spitting facts. Straight facts, homie. Oh, um, it was so good. So it yeah. was so good. I also developed a new, like my new favorite thing last night. Oh, yeah. The Oilers would score. Tyler and I would jump up, spin around and start pointing at Oilers fans in other sections of the arena. And <laughs> Upper bowl, goes, luxury suites. Who gives a but shit? But it's good. But, but, but they're, but that's, that, the funny thing is, is they're doing the same thing, they right? Pointing like everyone us. was just connecting with each other after a goal. It was yeah. awesome. 
Well, I, not uh, for everybody. The, 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 <laughs> there, was a, there was a mother and a daughter beside me. Yeah. And they got on the Jumbotron. So, yes, I jumped in front of them. <laughs> and then you leaned on a girl in front of us who was in the sling. Yeah, well, that we didn't know. And then she goes, hey, my arm. I'm like, oh, sorry. And then I'm like, and then I saw she had a cast. I was like, oh, shit, sorry. But, you know, we she was good. She was cool. We were, I think we were good amounts. We walked the line. We were a vibe. Of rowdy and sportsmanlike perfectly, I think. We 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 were, exactly. We were, ex- we were a polite, extreme fans. We were. Um one Kings fan, though. One Kings fan did not appreciate it so much. <laughs> Tell us so the story. After the fifth time, the fifth goal the Oilers scored, we're up and we're pointing at Oilers fans. We're waving our... Corey O, by the way, he brought a suitcase essentially full of the pom-poms from Rogers. Oh, oh, yeah. So we all had them. So we're Which was awesome. Around. I go to sit down after goal number five and then, boom, full beer to the back of the dome. It so it hits me in the back of the head. Shots fired. And explodes on the lady behind me. Like a nice old lady. She was, yeah, like, but then one thing that happened after that was every Kings fan in the area was very concerned that I was okay. Yeah. That was and nice. it kind of brought everybody together. Then I was started talking to the people beside us, and they're actually doing something interesting. They have a goal of trying to knock out every arena in the NHL. Yeah. And she, they were up to 11 or 12 or something now. They've only ever been to Vancouver in Canada. Yeah. So it, it was a weird thing. <laughs> Taking a full beer to the back of the head. Obviously a person with, uh, with means. Yes. That wasn't a cheap. That was a, that was a $20 that's a sign of respect Canadian actually decision. that, that you got someone riled up enough for being such a good Oilers fan that they were willing to part with $20 and throw it at your head. Yes. That's yeah. a sign of respect. It was. Um, That's right. So we actually like the King sends the mother daughter next to you. You got oh, along. They were great. Them. They loved it. They loved the fact that I did that. Yeah. Um, we had a great chat. The couple next to you, we yep. had great chats with yep. the old couple behind us who got hit with a beer. We got along good too. Cause we were like, obviously we apologize. We're like, Hey, sorry. Like obviously you don't get beer on you. If like, we're not cheering for the Oilers. So like we apologize, even though we didn't, really of course, have to. collateral damage, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so that was great. But we, the, the, well, again, Kings fans were great because they were like, listen, you guys aren't doing anything wrong. If the score was reversed, we would be doing the same exactly. thing. Exactly. We'd be yeah. sitting in our seats feeling shameful, not throwing $20 at anyone. No. no. We can't afford but, that. <laughs> yeah, no. We're podcasters. Plus, um, if you threw a liter of coal at someone, you might kill them. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone came up to you and was like, hey, I reported the guy. Yeah. He, so the guy who reported the beer tosser came up. He sought me out on the concourse to make sure, first of all, that I was okay. Second, he's just like, I want you to know that like, that was not cool. I reported him. The guy got kicked out, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, it's all good, man. And then immediately after that, an amazing Oilers photo occurred in the moments. Oh my God. Okay. After well, let's go back to the afternoon. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack here. We're setting up for the pregame show before, yeah, yeah. before we got told Kicked to leave up. LA live. Yeah. Um, we're set up for the pregame show. And we're like, Hey, there's Derek Broussard and Chris Russell. They must be the healthy scratches tonight. Yeah. That makes sense. Who's that third guy with them? We're like, Oh, he's no way. He's a player. <laughs> and we're like, Oh, he's yeah, way too tiny to be a player. Like no way. And then we're at the game. And there is a couple of people in Olivier Rodrigue jerseys. Whoa, we, whoa, whoa. we had it sussed out. It was the Rodrigue before that. I didn't at least. Oh, okay. But okay. I, I immediately went to DB and sussed it out. So Olivier Rodrigue was on the concourse, just hanging out, just hanging out. He had family there. Yeah. yeah. There was Rodrigue Jersey. Uh, so we called them over and we're like, we have a photo with you. So if you go to the Oilers nation Instagram, there's a group photo of a bunch of Oilers fans and Olivier Rodrigue, <laughs> which was cool. So random. I know it's so random, but it's awesome. And then we kept, I, at least I did. I kept running into like, I think it was his brother and his grandpa, his grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. We kept running into him. And his grandpa does not speak English. I know, but his grandpa was loving it though. Loving it. He was loving it. He was, he was buzzing. I, told it was him, I said, we should start him game four. <laughs> and they got a good chuckle out of that. It was just one of those things too. Like no matter where we were, we were just collecting friends. Yes. It was a friendship tour. It really was. we met Oilers fans. I, like we met the one guy who's super nice from Kansas city. Oh yeah. He was yeah, great. He's from he was Kansas cool. city. He's not even from like, not even like been to Edmonton. Oh no. He's visited Edmonton, but he's never he hasn't been to the new rink. He hasn't been to the, but he's not from Edmonton. 
He's a yeah. Kansas City guy who's an Oilers fan. Who flew to LA to watch a playoff game. I love it. Wow. But that's what's cool, right? You get to, and that's what's, you know, walking around the concourse, like you just run into people and you just, and everyone, that's the best thing because we we're traveling. So, but everyone's traveling. So everyone's best friends, right? Yeah. So everyone wants to talk to each other. So you have those great conversations and you find out like cool stories. Like, you know, the Arizona couple, the guy from KC, Olivia Rodrigue, you know, it's just like, it's, it's that's our boy. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was interesting. Our crew just kept developing and developing and developing. And also the team was just buzzing. So where everyone's oh in the, the greatest of spirits. So like one, nothing two nothing. And then it stayed two nothing for a bit. Right. Yeah. I think. Um, and then it felt like for a little, it was maybe going to tighten up. Oh no! And then it was five, two. And it was like, okay, maybe this is still a bit of a game. What happened? Why are you laughing? I just, I just looked at the picture that Jay sent us. <laughs> So I'm just skipping ahead. <laughs> I collected on my kiss last night. I was not going to have the disrespect that I was ducking Tyler. In <laughs> so Jay snapped. On it. This was a, this was a beautiful moment. <laughs> Oh, that's that is right before we kissed. Couple, uh, that, we actually you, you kissed, were going by the way. in for it. Like I caught it. Like I just a little too trigger happy. But so, you, and it's on me because <laughs> the live photo. Oh, does photos it get the great. smooch? It gets the smooch. Oh yes, I did document it. <laughs> uh, this is one of the moments that will never see the light of day. Nope. Oh, well, that's on my phone. It had to happen though. Tyler. I kept kind of trying to psych out bagged milk yeah, by I like puckering bluff. up and like, oh, kiss me, kiss me, because I I thought you wouldn't actually kiss me. And then in the smash burger while we're hammered after the game, you kissed me. Yeah. I wasn't gonna take that. Oh, well, Oilers one eight two. Like that is that's open. If there's season. ever a time where I'm gonna <laughs> land one on you, it's after the Oilers win eight two in Los Angeles. So the Oilers win eight two. Nuge scores twice. Hello. Oh. Like what a trip for you. And it was uh, the Oilers tweeted something about those two goals. It was the fastest two playoff goals by somebody since Curry, Curry uh, like 81 oh, yeah. seconds or something. The and double both happened right in front of us, which is sick. I know there was like, yeah, that was on that attack zone. Like we had just such a it great was, point of view for all those goals. It was honestly comical when they just kept piling in for the Oilers. I, know, I started feeling like bad actually. We, we stand up and cheer. And then they score again. You kind of like stand up and laugh. And then they get another one. And you're like, what the hell is going on? Evander Kane finishes off the Hattie. 19 seconds left, by the way. Hell yep. of a dish by Nuge. Hell begged, of a dish by Nuge. Begged Milk's hat was <laughs> off his head. Bef- like puck hits the twine back in the net. Before the puck hit the ice, Begged Milk's hat was off his head. But it was the worst throw I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it was horrible. He literally just, it was one quick fluid motion, hand went up, grab the hat, and he literally just threw it straight down. <laughs> like, but like, it was like it three rows forward. It was, I like spiked it like it was a football almost. Yeah, it was so funny. It was, it was so, so bad. Well, and, then, and I'm dumb anyway, because it would have just hit the net if I actually threw I it. I know, that's the whole like, everyone's like, why do you, I'm like, there's no way we, uh, anyways. So, long story. It, your hat does not make it to the ice. Nope. But it's living it making its way back to me. Well, yeah, yes, so I, I had it coming back. Corey O from Sherwood Ford goes over and we're like, oh, he's going to get your hat back for you so you won't lose it. And then Corey O just grabs it and throws it on the ice. <laughs> whilst, whilst he is still wearing his hat, <laughs> yeah, which is a faux pas. <laughs> so funny. But I, love, but I love it. But you know what? There is. So that's the second time I've done a hat toss in an opposing barn this year. And there's just something special about throwing your hat in someone else's building. Oh, it's a, it's, it's definitely, well, you know, well in Calgary, we lost nine, five or whatever the hell it was, but it definitely is a nice F you to, to the fans when you can throw your hat there. Uh, I just, I will never get the image in my head of how quickly (laughs) your hat just boom, gone. Yeah, I'll remember that forever. It was arguably the worst hat toss of all time. Mm-hmm. But the quickness at which I reacted and threw it. I couldn't even process that it was a hat trick from Kane, but your hat was gone. <laughs> <laughs> 19 seconds left in the game. Got to do it. I forgot there was that little time. Left. I know. I thought there was a few minutes left, but yeah, 19 seconds. The audacity. That would explain why there was like no one in the building. There was like, no Corio one. was like a section over going to get the hat. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, that was a hell of a game. That was so a hell of an fun. experience. It was just, and then, you know, then we go out after and then, you know, the bars, like everyone's still in their oldest jerseys. So then once again, everyone just kind of globs in together, right? And yeah. just starts hanging well, out. So we go to this bar and they're like, oh, there's like a 20 minute wait to get in. Yeah. And we just looked at a table of Oilers fans and we we're like, oh, we're with them. Yeah. <laughs> and then we just walked in and we didn't have a table. Like it was, it was not a bar. It was a restaurant with a bar. Yes. And we, Oilers fans turned it into a bar yes there was no room at the bar for us because nope. again there was, there was a no line room to get for in. anyone so we were just standing like where the servers were like getting drinks to bring them to the tables so they had to keep telling us like hey move over because we were just but like, it was good, but they, but they let it happen right yeah. like which was which yeah. was great but yeah like you're not going to deny a guy in an oilers jersey pointing to a people in oilers jerseys and deny that we're together <laughs> So funny. You cannot argue that. And then we went over, just said hi to those people, and then just like lived our life. It was the best. It was the best. That was a great night. What a hell of a game. I drank way too much. I think that you could have done better. Well, I think, I think now I think you've learned a lesson, man. You can't. I've learned a lesson. Those leader drinks are dangerous. That's just, I feel so bad today. And it's because of leader of Colos. No, it's not. It has to be. It's because we were drinking like double rise later. Like I wasn't. Oh, I, was I guess not. we did with McKenna. McKenna there, we did. And yeah, like, I was not drinking those with you guys. The beers at the restaurant were not good. Not going down smooth. The best thing I think yeah. I did last night was Jay and I ordered some ramen from a street truck, like a food truck on the street. Yeah, that there's, good. there was like this Mexican street food truck and they had ramen as like, like a, I can't, so, like, I, I can't remember the word before ramen, but it was something ramen. And so we order it and what they do and it's, I, I don't care. It's awesome. Is they basically take a cup of soup, but like the bowl version and like they dressed it up, fortify it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh. And, and it was unbelievable. Cause at first, when we got back to the room, we opened the bag and we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was just like, I could have bought this at the store for 10 cents, but it was delicious. Yeah, it was good. Fantastic. Yeah. I love, I love, I love street food. I, I regret not eating last night. Well, that, you know, that might help you feel better today. Maybe probably the thing is like, we come out of the building, crush a smash burger, and then go hang out for two hours. And then I go crush a ramen. Like that's a lot. I ate a lot last night. Yeah. Operation keep it tight has been paused for the well, 10,000 steps yesterday. Hopefully today we can get somewhere in the 10. We're going to go 20s. to the beach and then do an angels game. Yeah, I'm super going- excited. I've never been to an MLB game. Yeah. Oh, I'm super excited. I'm bet it. on it. I'll be fine. I got to talk about last night. So yeah. Jay, Jay, hold up. I, I feel like Jay and I need to get some commission from this from you, but continue. Jay and Tyler are putting, so we're having lunch. Jay and Tyler are putting together their DraftKings lineups and all I'm starting to feel the FOMO because I've never played DraftKings before. And you've always been against it. You're like, I don't need that in my life. No, it's just, I don't need another vice. vice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the last thing I need is another vice, but I was feeling the FOMO. I wanted to play too. sign up for the account. Tyler teaches me how to do it. I put my lineup together. <laughs> I finished third place out of like 1200 people. Yeah. Your $5 wager won you how much? 200, 200 something. 200 US. Yeah. The all Oilers stack was a very wise decision for fantasy players Oilers last stack. night. I had Connor. I had Leon. I had Nuge. I had Kane. I had Mike Smith. Yeah. So I just really leaned into the Oilers and it paid off for me. That's unreal. As it did on our bets. We also hammered on the bats and the Oilers delivered because they were puck line machines. I was looking this morning at what I was betting yesterday. I kind of forgot a little bit. I am pumping over one and a half power play goals all series because the Oilers are giving it to me. So good. Every single. Is that plus? Yeah, Yeah. it was plus 150. Oh, that is juicy. It would have hit it every game this series now. It was delicious. Eight to. Eight two, like Who just they a never convincing win on vacations, convincing win. Like, and also important to note, nation vacations. Our record has been poor. Last night, I feel like evened it out. They won in Nashville too. Yes, we're on a we're on the we're on a roll now. We're coming back. It's it's. I think it's the bus version. Yeah, we're not we're not we're not not good on the bus. On the planes, we're pretty good. That is true. Although the bus to Winnipeg was successful. That's fair. What a wildly different feeling I have about this team 
Like I wasn't panicking after game one, but everyone had that pit in their stomach. Of like, oh yeah. Everyone oh was God, is this, is this Winnipeg 2.0? And then they go and then outscore the Kings. 14 goals in two games. 14 to two over the last two games in the playoffs. I know, man. It's wild. <laughs> one thing that I noticed that was weird last night a little bit is Kings fans cheer at odd times. Oh yeah. Well, like I've said this before when people are like, oh, Roger's place is a library. Like it's so quiet. And I agree. Sometimes it is, but I think that's a product of the fan base. And I'm trying to not be an asshole when I say this, but like of knowing actually what hockey is. Oilers fans are very, very smart. Some sometimes to our detriment or whatever. Right. Uh, Like we're not going to cheer for like a three on two because it's like whatever. Kings fans. It's like, oh, here comes a one on two rush and they're like, ah, go, go, go. Like okay. Possession transition. They're like all over it. Like yeah. it could be a one on four and they're like, woo, which I'm is like, nice. Like act like you've been here before. I, suppose. I was just confused. I was, it was confused confusing. about what they were cheering at sometimes. And you know, they, they in any bo- any kind of body contact, they're cheering oh, any yeah. kind. Didn't matter. The tap water in LA is not good guys. Well, thankfully we went and stocked up. We, we made a power move. Yeah, you guys went and bought water. I just bought a two liter of orange juice, (laughs) (laughs) which I don't regret. Nor should you. All right. So how long has this podcast been? Let me lean over. Oh, we're past half an hour already. We should uh, wrap it up. We got some ads to Doe, HGA. Well, yeah, the HGA group is. Shout out Quentin. Quentin from HGA is on our trip. Yes. What a beauty. Um, Quentin from HGA is here. We love the HGA group. Uh, DoorDash. Promo code real life DD gets you 25% off and no delivery fees on your first order. Oodle noodle. Oodle noodle. I was looking for an oodle noodle last night. We were. I should have known better. There isn't one here. I would love oodle noodle today, to be honest. Oh, butter. It's a butter chicken day. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I would. I would literally do anything for oodle noodle right now. Um, Oh, geez. I'm distracted. What was I doing? Ad reads. Yep. (laughs) Uh, Oodle Noodle was a sponsor of the pregame show. We were wearing Oodle Noodle Loves You t-shirts for the pregame show. Yeah, we were. And we'll wear them again tomorrow. Game four. Now we know that we can record on the street. Now we know where we can record. We're going to do it. No, they're going to come over and be like, you can't do it here. You got to be in the middle of the intersection. (laughs) If you don't listen to Oilers Nation radio, yesterday we saw someone climb a crane. Yeah, there was some shenanigans. There was some shenanigans. Yeah, yeah that, that, that resulted in nine helicopters flying over <laughs> basically crypto because it's a building right beside it yeah. and like a hundred fire trucks. Wild. <laughs> basically, that dude's stunt of climbing the train or a uh, crane, I should say, cost LA a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. Taxpayers paid dearly for whatever the hell that was yesterday. The Australian guy's like, ah, oh, he's probably up there recording a TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> but, and like he said it, obviously, he's a local, I think. But like he said it so nonchalantly, he was like, "I have probably someone up there yeah, filming a TikTok." Yeah. I'm like, what's going yeah. on? Oh, there's a guy climbing the crane, probably recording a TikTok or some shit. I was like, in an Aussie yeah. accent. That's LA, baby. That's that's showtime. My voice is gonna be gone by game the end three. Of the day. Let's go. That was great. Can't wait for game four mm-hmm. today. We are going to medicate ourselves, go to the beach, relax, rejuvenate. A little bit of Eat some street food. Mark oh, Letestu jersey is doing delicious up. tacos. Mark Letestu jersey is doing what it needed to do. I'm glad I made that switch game two. Yeah. I'm glad I wore game three. Best so believe I'm I packed game four. two jerseys because I planned on wearing one for each game, but I'm 2-0 oh and I can't switch. And you got to wear all those necklaces too. New oh, jersey on necklaces. Nuge, yes. I Man, went to, Nuge had a game. I went to bed last night and for some reason I put a beer next to my bed. Well, that's that's very on brand for you. I also woke up to take a leak and I saw you and you were sleeping with your laptop right beside your head opened. Oh, I was watching like, Seinfeld. Yeah, I I can't sleep without the TV on. <laughs> oh, God. It's weird. Um, all right. <laughs> Should we wrap this up? I hope people, <laughs> right. I hope people enjoyed this. Maybe we'll do another one one day. <laughs> I don't know if we're doing one tomorrow, so I shouldn't say anything. PSA. Don't throw beers at people. Yeah, don't throw beers at people. But if you do, throw it at Bag Melt because he'll take it like a champ. And he won't press charges. And he won't press charges. And I'll make friends out of it. Yeah. And exactly. Turn when life. The, the friendship conversion per 60 is high. When life throws lemons at your head, you make lemonade. Yes. <sighs> I felt so bad for that lady though. She was doused. I yeah. know that's, that's yeah. Who throws a whole fucking beer. Yeah. Anyways. Well, I woke up this morning. I'm like, why is the back of my head sore? Like, oh yeah. I got the beer in the head. 
<laughs> That's playoffs, baby. That is playoffs, man. I would I, wear it as a badge honor, man. Oh. All right. <clears throat> I can't stop coughing. Shout out to the HG group, DoorDash, Oodle Noodle. Our friends at Sherwood Ford. We'll give them some love. Oh, of course you got it. They've been unreal. They are, they are here with us and yeah. they are they are repping proud and, and they are loud. And we're going to the game with them tonight too. So I'm excited. Oh, yeah, we're them. going to the Angels game. We tried to get a limo for the Angels game, but it's prom. Yeah, so like, what? we thought like because the Angels game is like an hour and a half away from here, which whatever. So it's more economical to, to get because there's 10 of us that yeah. want to go. So we're like, let's get a limo called five companies it's prom weekend every limo in la is booked think about that every limo in la what okay all right uber it is uber it is um we'll uh we'll be reporting live from the beach later today but thanks for tuning in to the uh special edition episode Thank 377 you i hope you're all feeling good i hope you're all enjoying what we're watching how uh, this team do right before our eyes i'm so happy for all of us right now because we are all living good life we're living I our best wanna, life just really quickly i want to give a shout out to i was looking at some of the videos of the boys back home the nation watch party at pint white last oh night. my god oh, bumping that was a vibe i kind of was envious like i love i love those watch parties yeah especially playoff like watch parties time last night yeah it was good to see it was good to see them pack the bar it was good to see goat and the boys there it was good to see man the back. boys were there goat was there yeah. oh yeah they're there all week they're they're they're, they're, they're there till monday wow we're going to miss them. It's just know, a shame it's we only got to hang with them the one day, but I love those guys. I'm so happy they came to Edmonton. All right. We wrap. We go right. beach. <laughs> Let's go to the beach. Beach. Thanks for tuning in. This episode is over. Look. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Real Life Podcast. Don't want to miss any of our nonsense? Hit the subscribe button and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram.